Um, I basically am a, I'm a fat, fat obesity guy. at the first ever One Health Obesity Symposium in Atlanta, Georgia. This is put on by the World Small Animal Veterinary Medical Association, as well as the Centers for Disease Control. I'm a pharmacist and I uh, serve on the board of the Obesity Action Coalition, which is an organization of 50,000 people living with obesity, looking for education, empowerment, and advocacy to help people uh, take charge of their health and, uh, and improve it and address obesity not as some sort of failure, but as what it is, which is a biological condition that works against our health. I was so moved by your presentations yesterday. The way that you were able to, to make this a real issue, one that shouldn't be attached with a stigma, we should be non-judgmental, it's a disease. You, you touch so many of that audience. People grow up often in families where everybody, for generations, has had obesity. Nobody signs up and says, you know, I want to live the obesity lifestyle. I want people to heap abuse upon me, assuming that I'm stupid, that I don't know anything about food, all this other stuff. And it's absurd what people can get away with. We really try and step back and get to the facts of the powerful biological basis for this condition and help people figure out how to make the best of the genes that they inherited and the environment that they live in and how they can improve their health dramatically and reject the kind of shaming and judgments that are all around us. One of the things that Ted did I think better than anybody else was remind us that this is a treatable condition. Many times you're at home, you're looking at your obese pet, you're dealing with you know, your own weight problems and you're saying I can't do it. But you shared so much data and research on how we can effectively treat obesity. Well, there's a whole range of evidence-based solutions that have been uh, that have been studied over and over again. Clearly one size does not fit all. This is a condition that in everybody it's different. How do you view this, this pet obesity problem that we're struggling with? Until I came to this conference I knew nothing about the One Health Initiative. It's an impressive concept because in obesity we deal a lot with childhood obesity and what the experts there have figured out is that you can't address childhood obesity in isolation. The solutions that work are family-based solutions. What's plain to me going away from this is that family-based challenge extends to the animals that we love and the animals that love us profoundly. And so solutions for both the humans and our animals are going to be linked together. This is an exciting event. It's one we hope that it will spread throughout the world. It's one health. This is one love. This is one problem, but it has a solution. And with people like you out there doing it, we're going we're gonna to solve this and make this world a healthier place. Thank I you love so your much. Enthusiasm. Thank you. Thank you. So my name is Alex German. Um, I basically am a, I'm a fat fat obesity guy. Um, In fact, you're known as the fat vet, That's me. but you're not very fat. Um, not at the moment. I, I work at University of Liverpool um, and my main um, goal, I guess, is uh, like you to try and cure obesity, prevent obesity. You have been instrumental in so many millions of pets' lives. I mean, you've touched so many, so just want to get that off my <laughs> shoulder here. You do a great job. Actually, to study this disease, because we both agree obesity is a disease, we can study it in the natural environment. So we're looking at real pets with real life problems and we're trying to make it better. What you said there is the thing that unites you and I. We are trying to improve the quality of life for pets and that is in our little crusade through fighting obesity. Because you also do quite a bit of research. I mean, some of the, the best research done in the world is at your facility. You're very kind, Ernie, with that. I mean, we, we do do, we do, do a, a little bit of research and we try and make it relevant to, to pets, uh, the parallels with human obesity, and that's really where your questions are. In the, in the States, you've got just about a 50%. Uh, it's pretty much the same in the, in the UK. We've been into, in this field for sort of 12, 13 years now. And fast forward that time, despite 
your best efforts, my best efforts, I'm seeing more and more fat dogs and cats out there. People's minds have changed, their eyes have changed, and that is now the new norm. So that we're seeing overweight dogs and cats, and our mind is adjusted to that's what's normal. Yeah, and as you know, that's what I call the fat pet gap. That's where pet owners look at their dog or cat who is over, overweight or obese, and they say it's normal. What does it do? Um, there are a range of comorbidities that we see with um, dogs and cats being overweight. It's pretty much very similar to what we see in, in people. So the big ones, dogs, arthritis, diabetes, a um, bunch of other stuff as well. Cats, diabetes is probably number one. We have evidence out there that suggests that if you, if you overfeed your dog and they're overweight, they live a shorter lifespan, on average about two years. So, you know, they're living shorter lives. It's also about quality of life. And one of the, the studies that we, we did, one of our landmark studies, if you like, suggested that basically overweight dogs and cats, they have a poorer lifespan. A right. Poorer quality of life. Is this is about quality of life. If your dog or cat is too heavy, it is suffering. It's just right. that simple. Yeah. I always say, you know, these are food bowl diseases when we're talking about like type 2 diabetes mm -hmm. in particular. And um, I think too often we think that disease is something that happens to us, but many times we can take some simple steps to prevent these diseases. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm, I'm glad you raised the issue of prevention because to be honest, prevention has got to be our number one. Healthy lifestyle, healthy habits, don't feed them too much weigh your dog and, and cat regularly. But the one thing that we both agree we do very badly is the early life period. Um, you know, as veterinarians, we've concentrated on vaccination and neutering, and those are our interactions. But we basically, you call it a, a gap year. There's, there's a, a bunch of time, there's a long time when vets are not seeing the growing dog or cat and their owner. And that's really where bad habits develop, and it's also where obesity develops. We know in kids, kids that become overweight when they're young are likely to be obese for the rest of their life. We can see a similar thing from the studies we've done that in both dogs and cats. You're a, you're a good friend, but more importantly, you're a good friend to millions of pets out there who would be suffering without your efforts. So I want to thank you so much, man. Thank you, Ernie. I'm here with a very distinguished guest. This is Dr. Alpa Patel. And she is from the American Cancer Society, so thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much for talking with me. So I do a lot of work in obesity and physical activity and cancer and how those two things can help if we can combat obesity and physical activity, how we can lower some cancer risk. So I run a large national study of actually 300,000 people that have volunteered wow. to be in the study for the next 20 years so that we can look at all aspects of lifestyle and health um, and cancer risk in humans. And it's been fun to actually have some conversations to think about how we may be able to capture some pet ownership information in that study to also understand about our, our canine and feline friends and family. So I think a lot of people don't realize that there are about now 13 different very common types of cancer, things like breast cancer in women and colon cancer that are strongly linked to obesity and physical inactivity. Next to tobacco, it's, it's the second leading cause of cancer today that we know. We actually predict that within the next 20 to 30 years, obesity and physical inactivity, poor diet will overtake tobacco as the leading cause of cancer. I think that especially if you're a pet owner, it's good for both you and your dog to go out for a nice long walk or, you know, go out, throw the ball and run around with them instead of just having them run around. <laughs> Our family had a golden retriever who uh, was uh, just over three years old when we noticed a bump on his head and it was actually an osteosarcoma um, on his skull. And so uh, we lost him and he was about four and a half years old. And so uh, it's been great to be at a conference like this where we can really talk about that interplay between humans and our pets. Cancer, you know, I was a very impressionable 14-year-old and my grandfather was one of the healthiest people I knew and ended up being diagnosed with a very aggressive brain tumor, died in about six months. Uh, so that's what got me interested in cancer. What can parents do today if they have children that are young, school age, high school, whatever, what are the, some simple steps they can do to help keep their children as healthy as possible? You know, I think one of the biggest things that we see is really around screen time, whether that's video games or television or being in front of the computer. 
And I think that the more we can encourage activity, even if it's in the house, so we are creating an environment for our children and ourselves that is more and more sedentary. And so thinking about small ways to change that, even if you're out shopping with your kids, park farther away from the entrance of the store, make them take the stairs up to the second floor of the, you know, of the mall, and you know, do those kinds of things that can help them just get a little more activity in their day. And of course, you know, as much as they can, have them go outside with the pets and play. Right, and that's one of the reasons why I prescribe pets for children because it forces them to interact with nature, gets them outside moving, and like you said, it makes them put down the video game, the tablets, the whatever they're doing that's disconnecting them from this beautiful world. Dr. Patel, thank you so much for taking time. Thank you for all the work that you're doing because cancer sucks it and does. people like you are doing everything in their power to fight it so i love to say i check want to out put what myself she's doing out of a job <laughs> that's right thank you so much